Mr. Cummings, Sir Patrick Vallance in his diaries, uh, Helen McNamara have made reference to you lying, to you getting overexcited and just saying stuff, that you say things which surprise people because they knew the evidence base wasn't there. Out of fairness to you, and because this is a vital issue that goes to how well the system of government was operating, you being, as you describe in your book, in the hot seat, how could, to a significant extent, important government advisers and officials have concluded that the Secretary of State for Health, in the more of this public health crisis, in the more of the beast, was a liar? Well, I was not. You will note that there's no evidence from anybody who I worked with in the department or the health system who supported that, uh, those false allegations. Um, and indeed, where there have been specifics attached to any of those allegations, I've gone through them, and I'd be very happy to answer questions on any of them. Um, and then in a couple of occasions, there were general sweeping allegations which had no evidence whatsoever. In one case, the witness said, I haven't got this in black and white. Well, of course not, because it wasn't true. And in another case, um, the witness said, um, the, uh, the, the accountability and governance arrangements didn't pick this up. Well, they didn't because, again, the allegation wasn't true. The inquiry can, if it chooses, get to the bottom of each of the specific allegations because they are not true. And I'm very happy to write with an explanation of each and every one of them. Um, the, um, of course, uh, the impact of the uh, toxic culture that essentially was caused by the chief advisor, um, but that clearly you can now, I can now see, not that I knew at the time, others were, um, were brought into, that was uh, unhelpful. Um, on the other hand, in the heat of a crisis, People say things, uh, especially on WhatsApp, which is essentially conversational, uh, that they don't, um, that are, that are, you know, that they may not may not be their full considered opinion. For instance, the cabinet secretary also described me as "can do" in a note to the prime minister. So, um, you know, it, I think there's a broader view, and also I got on with him perfectly well through the whole thing, and um, uh, and, and 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 afterwards, and it's only because of this inquiry that I've seen the. Um, language that he was using uh, behind the scenes. So, you know, was this a problem up to a point? Um, what is the lesson for the future? I think, unfortunately, the lesson for the future is systems need to be in place so that if there is a malign actor in, in number 10... Do you mean Mr Cummings? Well, in this case, that was the example, but there may be in the future. But if there are people whose... Um, behaviour is uh, is unprofessional. The system needs to be able to work uh, despite that. That's why I think I place reliance on the COBRA system, and why I try to use the COBRA system. Um, and I think that you know that is the repository of emergency response knowledge, understanding, experience within government, and it, it, it was the appropriate place to run this response until it became so big that it needed its own um, systems of decision making, and eventually the COVID-S and COVID-O system was put in place, which, was, which is what I'd recommend for the future in an all-engulfing crisis like this. Um, so up to a point it was a problem. Was it unpleasant? Yes. It was unpleasant for a whole load of my staff as well who, got, who were subject to this sort of abuse. Um, from the um, from the chief advisor, it went fur wider than I thought at the time. Um, but my job was to lead the health and care system, the whole thing. 1.4 million people in the NHS, over 3 million in social care, and well, so I just got on with with doing that to the well, best of my ability. 